Jason here from 4th Player Films and Flight Path Development, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at ambient occlusion texture baking using 3ds Max 2014 and the Mental Ray Renderer. Uh, now this is a tutorial that I've gotten a couple of requests for over in the, uh, or on the FS Developer Forum, so I figured that uh, I may as well whip something up real quick here. So anyway, let's get started. Uh, so the first thing that uh, you need to do before you can even think about baking your textures is you need to make sure that your renderer is set to Mental Ray. You can find this under the uh, Render Setup tab on the, the toolbar at the top of the window. Uh, and you need to scroll down and find the Assign Renderer tab. You're going to click that rollout and then you're going to go in here and you need to make sure that you have your renderer set to NVIDIA Mental Ray. Now I of course uh, use this as my uh, default renderer, so I don't need to change anything. Uh, but quick heads up, if you have it set to default scan line, this will not work. Um, and I'll get into why in a, in a few minutes. But uh, anyway, the reason why we're going to be using Mental Ray is because unlike the scan line renderer, uh, this one is designed to be a photorealistic renderer, uh, which means that uh, basically it has full featured lighting effects, shadowing effects, it uh, handles reflections a little bit better in my opinion than default scanline. Um, but most importantly it has more advanced materials that you can use that allow you to fine tune uh, reflection settings, uh, it allows you to apply a variety of different bump maps, normal maps, whatever. Um, now of course we're not going to be using any of those features for this but it is something to keep in mind if you ever are using 3ds Max or something other than modeling for Flight Simulator or just games in general, uh, then uh, definitely give Metal Ray a try. I think you'll find it much more usable than uh, default scanline. But anyway, that's uh, that's off topic. Uh, so we're gonna get going here. Uh, so the first thing we need to do after you set your renderer is you need to obviously select the model that you're gonna be baking, and uh, something that we have to take care of first is we actually need to separate some of the faces out from the rest of our model. Uh, now I've already done this, of course, you can see, you know, I, I do this as I go along while I'm working on it, but uh, there's actually a, a very good reason for doing this, and it's not organization, it's actually because uh, when you bake your textures, what can happen is you might get artifacting or uh, parts of your texture sheet won't render uh, or they'll render improperly, uh, and I don't know why this happens, but I've noticed it happens if you're baking on a model that has more than one texture assigned. Um, now, of course, if you're modeling for a flight simulator, I've not been doing this very long, but I know that uh, typically you're going to have more than one texture assigned to an object. Um, it's just, you know, sometimes it's just unavoidable. And uh, that that is fine, and you can do that, but uh, what we need to do is we need to separate out every single 3D face uh, per texture so that we don't get any of that artifacting. And uh, here's an easy way to do it. Now when you apply a texture to your model, if you have more than one then it'll assign material IDs. Uh, so for example, let's say you have texture 001.dds and texture 002.dds. Uh, now 001 will most likely have a material ID of 1. You may have set this yourself or it may have been automatically assigned. In either case, uh, we want to select every face that uses that material ID and we're going to detach it from our model. Um, an easy way to do that is to go into the polygon sub-object mode with your material or with your object selected and you're going to scroll down and find material IDs. You're going to type in the material ID that you have uh, that you need to separate out. And uh, in this case, I know that this entity that I'm working with right now has a material ID of 7, that's the name. Uh, so I'm just going to type in 7, then select ID, and it will select every face in the model that uses that ID. Um, now, uh, simply, we just need to detach it from the rest, or rest of the model. Uh, you can name it whatever you want, it doesn't really matter, because uh, at some point you will probably end up reattaching it to... Uh, one single model. Uh, the only reason that we're detaching it in the first place is for texture baking. Um, so mine's already isolated, it's all detached, so I don't need to do anything here, so I'll just cancel that. Um, anyway, once you have those separated out, let's start getting into the materials. So, like I said, we're going to be using Mental Ray uh, to render all of this. You can just ignore this, that's all other stuff. Um, so, we need to start off with 
the mental ray materials obviously we're going to use an archon design material if you can hear my phone going off there just ignore that sorry about that I, this is my first tutorial so I'm, I'm not using a script I'm just kind of ad hocing it so bear with me here uh, anyway as I was saying we're going to be using an archon design material uh, again something to keep in mind is this will not work with the default scanline renderer unfortunately it's just completely incompatible uh, if you try using that you're going to get a completely transparent black render when you try this um, anyway so this isn't the only thing we need to use though we need to assign something to the diffuse color map uh, for example uh, when you would be texturing something else normally you would apply a bitmap or a DDS texture to the diffuse rollout um, now in this case we're not going to be doing that uh, we're going to be using a single material for this and you need to search ambient and it should pull up uh, this material right here ambient slash reflective occlusion and just drag that there and then assign it to your diffuse color map uh, a couple things we need to edit here with the arch and design material we need to set the reflectivity to zero otherwise it can just give you weird problems with like reflections and whatnot doesn't usually happen but it can so just something to be aware of um, and actually that is I believe all we need to change on this uh, however we do need to modify the material a little bit here uh, so I'm gonna come over here whoops uh oh oh where did it go okay there it is um, so yeah double click on that and it'll pull up this rollout for it uh, now a couple things you need to keep in mind first of all uh, before you change anything is uh, you need to figure out what the texture size is that you're going to be using now personally in my case I'm designing exclusively for P3D and FSX so I use textures that are mastered uh, from 4096 by 4096 texture sheets uh, if you've ever done any CGI work or maybe even uh, architectural visualization uh, then you probably know those as uh, Cinema 4K textures. Um, but uh, anyway, so if you're using larger textures, something you need to keep in mind is that you need more samples for your ambient uh, occlusion properties. Otherwise, you can have uh, shadows that look sort of uh, specklish, or, well, I don't know, it's difficult to explain. Basically, what happens is the way the renderer works is it sends out rays of light in every direction uh, from a defined point in space which would be just whatever light you're using um, and what can happen is if you have the samples set too low you can see those individual ray points uh, on your texture sheet so the best way to avoid that is just to up the samples uh, now usually for textures that are in 4k resolution I would say uh, set the samples to at least 30. Um, now of course you can use more or less depending on your requirements and preferences. Uh, personally in my experience is 30 has been plenty. It, it looks very very smooth. Everything is a, uh, a very gradual color gradient. Uh, it, it works very well in my opinion. Um, now of course you can use more but something you need to remember is that this will add to your render times. Now as it is using 30 samples uh, with 4K textures uh, often gives me render times of up to an hour sometimes a little bit more uh, depending on the complexity of the model um, but that's even with a uh, four and a half gigahertz quad-core processor running this uh, and I've got a lot of RAM I've got a, a pretty powerful graphics card so definitely if you're designing on a lower end system you want to probably reduce this a little bit unless you don't mind the really long render times um, now of course I don't know what they'd be on a lower end system. They could be, you know, even twice as long. Um, but just something to keep in mind. Um, and on that note, I would also say don't set your samples to anything lower than uh, 23, maybe 24. Because uh, otherwise, that tends to be the threshold where you start seeing uh, the speckling and uh, just some of the noise. But uh, anyway, so moving on, uh, we're going to mess with our uh, color settings here just a little bit um, now personally I leave my bright setting on full white uh, what that means is um, anywhere that there isn't a shadow it will show the uh, texture through completely there will be no changes to the contrast or the brightness or saturation or anything basically uh, what would happen is if both of these were set to full white you would not see any shadowing 
Um, now the dark, however, is obviously uh, where you have shadows. Um, now by default, it's going to be set to full black. We need to change this because what can happen is if you leave it on full black, uh, you can get uh, textures that are, well, basically anywhere there's a shadow, they'll look washed out. Uh, it can uh, make everything appear totally black, and obviously that's not realistic or very appealing to see. Uh, so typically what I do is I increase this to uh, 0.2, maybe 0.3. Um, but usually 0.2 is about right. Um, and it, it, please ignore the uh, color of this. It looks a little bit too light for shadows, but keep in mind this is not how the final render is going to look. This is just how it previews it um, in the color selector. Uh, so anyway, everything else we're going to leave the same. You can turn on reflective occlusion if you want. Personally, I haven't really ever noticed much difference with it. Uh, but one thing to keep in mind, if you check this, then you need to enable, um, or actually, no, that's it. <laughs> yeah, I did not plan this video, so just go with it. Um, all right, anyway, so um, moving back to this, uh, we need to assign the material to the object that we're going to be baking on. And, okay. So, um, from here it's pretty simple. Uh, you need to, if you haven't done so already, you need to create a light. We're going to be using standard light, and we're going to be using a skylight. Now what this does is it doesn't actually, um, it, it's not a conventional light. Uh, now normally a lot of people recommend using an omni light or maybe a, a, a spotlight. Uh, personally, I don't recommend doing this because obviously those cast shadows. Now you can turn those off, but the problem then is that you get highlights on certain surfaces depending on what direction they're oriented relative uh, to the position of the light. Now we don't want that. We want uniform light over every surface, and the only shadowing we want is where light is going to be absorbed uh, from uh, adjacent surfaces or any surfaces that intersect. Uh, and that's what a skylight does, is it provides uniform light to everything in the scene. Now, um, you can leave all this stuff at stock settings. I personally would not recommend changing any of it, because then you can... Well, it, it screws with your colors, and it, it can look not that great. So, um, anyway, now I've already created one of these, so I'm going to delete this. Uh, I, don't, I don't need that. Uh, let's see. Oh, there is one more thing I'm forgetting. Uh, if you haven't done this already, you need to go, I believe, into rendering going to go to exposure control and going to deactivate any environment maps that you have. Um, now I use Metal Ray Physical Sky and uh, th this is for other things but uh, anyway that's a different topic altogether so I'll save that for another video. Uh, and let's see you also need to change your gamma and LUT setup. I have mine set to 1.5 right now uh, the only reason why I'm leaving it like this is because I forgot to change it when I first started making my uh, texture bakes for some other objects uh, in this uh, project that I'm doing. But normally you would want to set this to a value of 2. Uh, but for the purposes of this video, I, you know, I'm just demonstrating how to do this, so it's not really uh, important in this case. Uh, so I'll just leave that as is. Um, and I believe that is actually it. So. Let's get to baking. Now, uh, one thing you may want to consider doing is uh, if you have any planes underneath your project for the ground, you can see I have my photo imagery mapped onto it so I can place things, um, but you may want to consider hiding that plane that your project is sitting on because what can happen is uh, it will be factored into the ambient occlusion bake so it can make anything that's directly facing it so basically like the bottom of these jetways for example it can make those have completely black shadows on it regardless of your light settings um, now you can of course change this in whatever photo editing program you're going to use at some point whether that's Photoshop or GIMP uh, but personally I prefer just to hide it right off the bat for convenience sake uh, so I'm going to do that and uh, let's see, I have it on my no export layer, I believe. Yeah, okay. Um, so anyway, you're not going to get any occlusion from the ground off of this. And um, one way to work around that, of course, is you can just fake it 
using your photo editing suite. Um, or again, you can just leave the ground uh, unhidden and then lighten it a little bit uh, later on. But this is just my personal preference, so this is the way I'm going to do it. Um, all right, so you're going to hit the zero key. This is the hot key for the render to texture dialog. Uh, if that doesn't work, you can also find it under rendering and uh, right here under texture, right in this rollout. Um, so with your object selected, you're going to scroll down and you need to find the output rollout right here. We're going to go to add, ambient occlusion, mental ray, and you don't need a target slot. Personally, I would recommend you don't set one uh, for the reason that it will apply the baked texture to this once it is finished. Now, of course, that is, er, is easy to fix, but it can be a little bit of a headache, so I just leave that disabled. Uh, gonna change the uh, map size. Gonna turn that lock on so that I only have to enter this in once, and I'm gonna change that to 4K resolution, so that's 4096. And when you click off, it'll set the height to 4096 as well. Uh, you want to set er, samples to 30 in this as well. And you don't need to change any of the lighting settings in this. Um, and then one last thing you want to check for is that you have, oh wait, where is it? Uh, uh no, that's, up. Oh. <laughs> Again, just making this up as I go along. Um, okay, yeah, you want to go to your mapping coordinates and use the existing channel. Otherwise, what will happen is it will do an automatic unwrap on your object and that will completely balls up everything that you have done uh, unwrapping wise. Uh, so definitely do not use that. Um, all right. Anyway, getting back on topic. Uh, let's see. I believe that is actually it. So, oh, wait, no, no, one more thing. I totally forgot about. Uh, you want to set the output path for this. Now I have mine set to uh, currently to scenery cost texture bakes. Uh, just for this video, I'm going to go send it to my uh, storage drive and I'll create a new folder here texture bakes uh, and what this output path does is this is the folder where it's going to save the rendered file um, okay yes uh, so then all you have to do is hit render and yes okay continue yes and I uh, if you stop the render mid render uh, like if you hit cancel and then do it again, it'll ask if you want to overwrite. Just hit yes, it's fine. Nothing to worry about. Um, now again, this could take a little while, up to an hour, depending on the size of your texture. So uh, I'm just going to let it render through real quick to make sure that it doesn't have any artifacts in it. Um, yeah, looking pretty good so far. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that'll work. Okay, so I'm just going to cancel this. Um... Let's see, yeah. Uh, now the last thing I want to mention is that what you see in the render window here is not necessarily what is actually being rendered onto the texture. Uh, now what I mean by that is, um, for some reason the render dialog tends to, I, I don't know, it, it, it's kind of weird, it tends to just work a little bit differently from how it saves the texture. It'll preview colors slightly differently, it'll preview shadows, weird. Um, but anyway, if it looks wrong in here, it's nothing to worry about. Uh, all you need to do is go find, let's see, where is it? Just going to go find your texture output, and I apparently have something here, okay. Well, uh, anyway, I'm going to find the uh, output texture, and by default it's going to be saved as a TGA file with transparency. You're just going to drag this into your photo editing program on top of the texture sheet that you already have. Or if you don't have one, you can just open that and then build your texture on top of that. Um, and the only thing I can say more is for blend modes, uh, for how it's blended with the rest of the texture, you can set this to a multiply blend mode uh, and then it will show uh, any shadows just on top of your texture and it won't show any highlights or any bright spots. Um, in case it saves the white uh, as part of the texture. Uh, but anyway, that is all I've got for you today. Thank you for watching, and I will see you later.